Good morning and welcome to Unity of Kanawha Valley. We'll begin our service this morning with the lighting of the Christ candle. And Rich, if you would ring the bell, I would appreciate it. At Unity, we light this candle and ring this bell to remind ourselves of the Christ spirit that each of us carry within us. And now if you would speak with me our opening statement, we'll say that together as we take it within our heart. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, God, the good, omnipotent. And so it is. Now we'll begin our service this morning with um, our wonderful band, Ron, Ryan, and Jeff. Thank you guys. Hi everybody. We've given uh, Ryan the, the week off. He's been substitute teaching and uh, so just here with the mask marauder, Jeff. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to start off with Shirt of the Presence. And uh, Barbie Dahlman uh, 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 wrote me a nice email and thanked me for using the uh, his and her pronouns. Uh, uh, and uh, this week we're going to go one step further, and that is um, uh, the word Lord. Uh, the word Lord is really uh, uh, from the King James edition of the Bible, and it's a medieval term, and um, so we're going to get around that today and, and to say uh, our God instead of the Lord. So if, 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 if you hear that, uh, and it sounds a little strange to your ears, that's, that's we're going to try it out this week. So surely the presence. Surely the presence of our God is in this place. I can feel his mighty power and his grace. I can hear the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on its face. Surely the presence of our God is in this place. Surely the presence of our God is in this place. I can feel her mighty power and her grace. There's a holy hush around us. I see glory on its face. Surely the presence of our God is in this place. To start the uh, month of love out one day early. And this is uh, the month of love, February. So, love is the answer. <laughs>
You have to unmute Peggy. Okay, sorry about that. Um, our announcements this week, Cam says that Sojourners is now in need of cereals, breakfast bars, and peanut butter. So please, um, you can take your donations to the church and uh, check with Pam before you go to make sure she's there. Put them in the little barrel and she'll get those over to Sojourners. Appreciate that. Um, now she does have, also she has the Lent 2021 books, booklets that have arrived from Big Unity at UKB. And if you would like the booklet, it's called Release and Renew. She will mail one to your home. Just let her know. You can call her at the church or send her an email, ukbwb1 at gmail.com. So um, other than that, uh, the prayer chaplains will be calling this month. So look forward to that call. They always pray the most powerful, wonderful unity prayer. And if you're not home, they'll even, or if you're not at your phone, they'll even leave it on your voicemail. And sometimes I just do that so I can listen to it through the month when I need it. That's a wonderful thing. Um, other than that, uh, Sojourner Shelter donations and luggage and bags for the children's, Davis Children's Shelter. Um, and don't forget to donate to Unity of Canal Valley to keep our church running during this time that we're not together. We want to have a church to go back to when we do get out of this. So we will get out <clears throat> sooner than later. So appreciate all that. And now we'll go with the daily word. And Marianne's gonna do that. Thank you, Marianne. Sure. The daily word for today is now. And the affirmation is, I find my power in this very moment. There is power in this very moment. Yesterday is past and tomorrow is not yet here. There is only this moment ripe with promise and potential, ready for me to live into it fully. Through my many divine gifts, everything I need to get started is within me. I need not wait for the perfect moment to arrive because there is no time more perfect than now and no place more perfect than here. Procrastination has no place in my life. I fritter away my energy when I find reasons not to get started, losing my zeal and focus and inviting frustration into my life. Today, I claim the power of the present and say, this is the day I begin. Now is the time to begin, to serve, to forgive, to create, and to love. And from 2 Corinthians 6, 2. See, now is the ex acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. Some say love, it is a river that drowns the tender reed. And some say love, it is a razor that leaves your soul to bleed. Some say love, it is a hunger and endless aching need. I 
say love it is a flower and you it's only seed it's the heart afraid of breaking that never learns to dance and it's the dream It's the one who won't be taken, who cannot see to give, and the soul afraid of dying that never. Far beneath the bitter snow lies the seed that with the sun's love in the spring becomes the rose. Rich, is it time for me to start? You're on, babe. All right, great. <laughs> Thank you. Good morning. Thank you all for being here today. Thank you for bringing your loving energy into the space. And for UKV, thank you for asking me to share my thoughts with you today. My topic today is follow love. And I am so grateful that Ron had my back on this. It is January 31st. And as, some of, as most of you know, February is UKV's month of love. All love, all month. And I could not be this close to that and not talk about love. So thank you, Ron. I appreciate you understanding that um, we need to start talking about love now. And isn't every unity talk really about love? I mean, let's be honest. Um, but I certainly wanted to, to, um, to get off on the right start here with the beginning of February as a month to focus on love. So what I'm going to share with you today is something that you already know. Your inner wisdom already knows everything I'm going to say today. 
you already live it and express it. However, I, I think we all need time to remember what we already know. So this will be an opportunity for you to remember. Uh, almost nine years ago, I started a weekly meditation practice. And every Sunday, I spend two hours, and I use that time to do morning pages, which is a type of journaling designed by Julia Cameron. I do Vipassana meditation, and I also do some sort of contemplative practice. So I might do something like Lexio Divina, which is praying over scripture, or using my soul collage cards, which I'm going to talk a little bit about later, um, or maybe working a dream, some sort of contemplative practice that allows me to receive some guidance in my life. And I was thinking the other day that, that really these sessions that I have every Sunday afternoon are really remembering sessions because I don't necessarily get new insights every day or have some major perspective shift happening, but it's an opportunity for me to remember what I already know. I don't know about you all, but life often picks me up and carries me away and I will lose touch with what I know within me is the truth. And I have to keep coming back and keep coming back and keep coming back. And, and isn't that what church is all about? When we gather together, these are remembering sessions. It helps us come together and to remember the inner wisdom, the inner truth that we already know. So thank you for being here with me today so that we can remember together. I wanted to share with you a little bit about what's been my biggest challenge during the pandemic. And I almost hesitate to share this because it feels minor compared to what many other people are facing every day. Uh, obviously there have been people who have been very sick who've lost loved ones to COVID. There have been people who've had major financial challenges during this time. And, and some people who've had to, to not see their loved ones um, that are in nursing homes or wherever it may be in the hospital during this time because of, of COVID. Um, so before I tell you what my biggest challenge has been, I just want to acknowledge that I know that there are much heavier challenges, but this is what's been true for me. My biggest challenge over these last several months, almost a year now, has been a, around making decisions. Has anyone else had this, ha had this issue for you that it's a challenge to make decisions? It, it seems like decisions are so much weightier right now than, they've, than they were a year ago. Uh, it seemed like in the past, uh, I might have a heavy decision to make every couple months, and now it feels like almost daily and certainly, we certainly weekly, I have some challenging decision to make, whether or not to open my office or to continue sessions on Zoom. Who to invite to Christmas, or do I invite anyone to Christmas dinner? Who, whose invitations to accept? Is it okay to travel? And of course, as you know, the information changes, the numbers change. And so there, it's, it's difficult to keep up with all those changes as I continue to make these decisions. And that has been heavy on me over these last few months, trying to make decisions that are truly the right ones for me and for my community. And so last Sunday, I took this heaviness to my meditation time when I did a soul collage reading. And I'll tell you a little bit about soul collage. Soul collage is a spiritual practice where you make these cards and you basically use magazine images typically to make these little collages, about five by eight collages that represent different parts of yourself. So different parts of who you are, different energies within you. And then the real gift of using these cards is then you can sit down with these cards and, and, and ask for some guidance in your life. If you're looking for direction or you need encouragement, then, then you can pull a card and it can help guide you with whatever's happening in your life. And so 
I use these cards weekly as a way to just, once again, to just remember, to tune into my own intuition because each of these cards represent myself. So really I'm just asking my own inner wisdom to guide me, to direct me, to encourage me. And so last week I asked the question, what do you have to tell me about the angst and confusion I still face around making decisions right now. And I'm gonna show you the card that came up for me. This is one of the cards I pulled. So this is a card called the treasure. And I'm not sure how well you all can see it, but it's basically the inside of a cave. Here's the opening of the cave. And this hand is really dipping into the water that's flowing through the, that cave. And this card was inspired by the Joseph Campbell quote, which reads, the cave you fear to enter holds the treasure that you seek. I'm gonna say that one more time. The cave you fear to enter holds the treasure that you seek. And so if we are not guided by fear, then what are we guided by? I think you all can answer that. Who wants to answer? What are we guided by? Love, love, right. So this is what my card said to me. I'll read what I wrote after pulling this card. My card said, follow love, not fear. Follow love. Ask love, what would you have me do? Listen to that voice. Fear will confuse you and tangle you up. Fear will pop up in every possible solution. Love will calm you, will guide you, will give you a peace about the decision that you make. Follow love. It will lead you exactly where you need to go. And I already knew that, right? But I needed to remember. In the midst of all the heaviness that's happening in the world right now, I needed that reminder to follow the guidance of love. In A Course of Miracles, we're taught that fear is only an illusion and love is the only thing that's real. But I don't know about you guys, sometimes with me, fear feels really, really real. And I have to keep coming back to love and keep coming back to love as many times as it takes. You know, sometimes love gives us answers that are not the obvious answer or the most clear cut answer. There are times when love might give me and you a different answer for the exact same issue. And sometimes love might give me an answer today that's different from the answer I received yesterday. So I have to keep tuning back into that voice. Sometimes love might tell me to just be still and wait and allow something to pass. Sometimes love might tell me to stand up and use my voice to protect myself or others. Sometimes love may ask me to take a risk that feels a little scary. And sometimes love might ask me to play it safe. And all of those answers, even though they can feel so different, can be all coming from that same source, that source of love. The answers of love are not always easy and they're not always hard, but they are always compassionate and they're always in service to the goodness and well being of ourselves and others. So recently when I was struggling with that fear voice, it kept coming up for me over and over again. I decided to sit down and have a dialogue between fear and love. So I took out my journal and I wrote fear and I let it have its say. And it told me all the reasons why I needed to be scared and why this wasn't a good idea. And, and I let it air out whatever was on its mind. And then I let love respond. And we went back and forth for a few pages because fear had a lot to say and love was able to hold the space for that fear until 
it could be transformed into a loving response. You could call this dialogue a dialogue between yourself and God, a dialogue between your smaller self and higher self, or a dialogue between ego and essence. But ultimately, it's a, void, it's a dialogue between fear and love. So sometimes it's hard to tell the difference between those two voices. You know, when it comes to making decisions, this is what I've found helps me to know the difference. The language of fear is about guilt, shame, and obligation. And the language of love speaks in compassion, understanding, and sometimes in a sense of responsibility. And so the difference between responsibility and obligation looks like this to me. Obligation says you have to do this. And responsibility says this is yours to do. This is mine to do. It doesn't feel like a have to. It feels like this is mine. It belongs to me. As far as that responsibility, that feeling of responsibility when we love, I think one of the biggest challenges for me in love has been finding what, what I've always called the great balance in loving ourselves and loving others. And I used to feel like that there was often a tension between those two types of love, our self-love and loving others. And then I read a perspective from Cynthia Bourgeois in her book called The Wisdom Jesus. In that book, she talked about Jesus's great commandment to love your neighbor as yourself. And she talked about how many people think what Jesus meant was to love your neighbor equal to the way that you love yourself. But the way she perceives Jesus's message is that we are to love our neighbors as if they are us and we are them, as if we are one. And so when we love our neighbors, we love ourselves. And when we love ourselves, we love our neighbors. So it doesn't have to be this grand conflict. It can be something that flows together, that is in alignment, in unison with one another. This was a challenging lesson for me to learn, but about a little more than 10 years ago, I finally came to this acknowledgement about loving myself. At that time, I had a pretty major fatigue issue that was challenging every aspect of my life. And I couldn't figure out what was going on. The doctors had really little, little idea what was happening. And I was overextending myself. I was pushing myself, often in the name of love, often because I wanted to do good in the world. And so I pushed myself to beyond my limits at times. And one time I was taking a retreat, which was something fairly new to me. It was, I'm right now, I am now a retreataholic. So I've come a long way since then. But at the time, that was actually pretty scandalous for me to take a whole weekend for myself. And I took a weekend for a silent retreat at a place called Hope Springs Institute. And while I was there, I was walking the labyrinth. And I was reflecting on this idea of self-care and the way that I overextended myself and really didn't care for myself in the way that I needed to, to be healthy and to be able to truly have the well-being that I, I wanted and needed. And as I was walking, I got this feeling, I got this thought in my mind. I thought, you know, I have a right to take care of myself. It was almost like a petulant child, like stomping my feet, like I have a right to take care of myself. And the voice of the holy came in and it was a much calmer, less obnoxious voice. <laughs> and the voice of the holy said to me, Megan, you don't have a right to take care of yourself. You have a responsibility 
to take care of yourself. And suddenly I understood that in a new way. I was asking to love myself in a new way. And in doing that, it meant I had to make some different decisions. I had to make some different choices because love, as we know, is not just a feeling, it's an action. There were things I needed to let go of. There were things I needed to say no to. And I needed to say yes to myself more. And so at that time, loving myself was so important and taking actions to care for myself was so important. And because I gave myself that time to focus on my own self-care and my own self-love, today I'm able to serve others better. I'm able to love others better because I gave myself that time and space for healing, for wellness, for growth. So just imagine if we approached life with this question and everything that we do, if we stopped and we asked ourselves, love, what would you have me do? Love, what would you have me do? We could, we could ask that question before we speak, before we act, before we say yes or no to someone or yes or no to ourselves. We could ask that question before we push share on Facebook. If we did that in everything that we did, we could increase the vibration of love around us and in us. And when it really comes down to it, I don't think it's necessarily about the exact decision that we make. It's more about the spirit in which we make that decision, that we make that choice. There was a time when I was really struggling to make a difficult decision several years ago, and I looked for guidance in Marianne Williamson's book called A Return to Love. Many of you have probably read this book or heard of this book yourself. And I read this quote by Marianne Williamson that really helped me in that moment. She wrote, knowing who you are and why you came here, which this is my point of view, why we came here was to love. Knowing who you are and why you came here, that you are a child of God and that you came here to heal and be healed is more important than knowing what you want to do. So even if we don't make the decision that, that others may think is the exact right perfect decision or if we're still a little uncertain, if we're making it in love, that's what matters most. If we keep returning to love, then exactly what we do, what decision we make, won't be nearly as important as what is compelling us to make that decision. We can follow love and we can trust where it leads us. We can trust any decision that we make in the name of healing, in the name of compassion, in the name of love, and know that that's enough. So I'd like for us to take a moment together to meditate on this idea of following love, of remembering to return to that place within us over and over again as many times as it requires. So if you would like to now, find a nice comfortable position. Close your eyes if that feels right. Or perhaps soften your gaze if that feels better. And allow yourself to take a nice, deep, cleansing breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. And once again, 
inhale in and exhale. Tuning in to the sensations in your body. Just noticing what's happening in your body without judgment. Just being present with this moment you're in. And now imagine yourself on the path of life. Seeing the world coming at you. A swirl of demands. Of decisions that need to be made. Of challenges on the path. See all of that swirling around you. And now feel all your energy coming back to your heart center. Perhaps putting your hand on your heart if that feels right. Feeling all of the swirling, slowing down, softening, relaxing. Perhaps feeling the sensation of your heart beating slowly. This is your guide. Here are your answers. Right here in this heart space, in this place of compassion, in this place of love, in your connection to the holy within you, in this desire for your own goodness and the goodness of others. This is a safe place for you. Though you may be challenged at times in this space, it remains safe. You can return to this space as often as you need to a hundred times a day if necessary and let it lead you. You can choose compassion, caring, understanding, goodness for yourself and others in every moment. Just come back to it again and again and follow love wherever it leads you. God is love. Love will guide you. All you have to do is ask. Love, what would you have me do? All you have to do is be still enough to listen. Feel a sense of gratitude within you for love's availability to you in every moment. And so it is, amen.
Thank you so much, Megan. That was wonderful. And now if you'll join me in our offering prayer. Divine love moving in and through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. I give in love. I trust God. And I am grateful. Amen. Now let's hear from this amazing band again. Wow.
Thank you, Ron. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you so much. And now let's take a moment and bless our offering. And we thank you, Mother, Father, God, for these gifts of tithes and offerings that are freely offered from the hearts of the giver. We appreciate so much the bond between us that keeps our church alive. And we acknowledge that the love that circulates throughout our wonderful circle of Unity Canal Valley will be here for many years to come because of your generosity. Thank you so much. Amen. And now let's hear our peace song. No birthdays? No birthdays. Anybody have a birthday? You see anything, Rich? I do. Uh, my grandson. Did my, have a birthday? No, my my um, darling second grandson is 17 today. Uh, I, I didn't even think to mention it, but thank you for welcoming that. I appreciate that. And what is his name? Will. Will? His name is Will, yes. Okay. Anybody else? Speak up. Don't be shy. Okay. Let's sing happy birthday. Take it away, Frank. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you so much for that. Appreciate
Everyone can unmute if you wish. Great message, Megan. Wonderful. Oh, so Thanks to Megan. Just wonderful. Thank you all. Always timely. You're unmuted. Oh. Got to start off February, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I really appreciate you sharing your process of how you listen to your inner wisdom and how you discern one from the other. That was really helpful. Thank you, Barbie. Yes. I was a little afraid I was going to be giving too much information, but I thought that, <laughs> that's helpful for me when people share that. <laughs> yeah. So thank now you. Now you need to write it down step by step so we can remember. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the book's coming out soon. Um, oh, great. <laughs> I, I hope you're serious about that. <laughs> okay, I'm, no, I'm not. But <laughs> oh, please, please. <laughs> one day, one day. <laughs> Maybe I, start I with a pamphlet. Book by you, and I would pass it out to all my friends. So <laughs> please, please, please give us a book. <laughs> oh, thank you, Janet. That's how I feel about your little prayers book. Oh, oh thank yeah. you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe you should do a Zoom uh, social on this workshop. Oh, okay. There you go. Ooh, yes. But make it um, in the evening so people who work can come. Okay. Or weekends. <laughs> yes, when I do my workshops, I usually do them either in the evenings or uh, on Saturday mornings. Lovely. Okay. And her, uh, I've taken her so many notes on what you said today. Like if it was in a book form, my hand wouldn't hurt so bad. <laughs> <laughs> Megan's uh, soul collage workshops are wonderful. If anybody ever wants to take one of our soul collage yeah. workshops, they're really wonderful. Yeah. And I first met Megan at her silent day retreat, which I was scared to take, but it was so amazing. I don't miss them. Whenever she has one, I'm there. It, it, if you have not given yourself the gift of a day of silence, by all means, take that workshop. It is just so uplifting and encouraging. And you, you can really get in touch with what's going on in here. And it is a gift to yourself. It is part of that self-care and self-love. Please take advantage of that the next time she offers it. Mm -hmm. 